Hello everyone, this is Amar. In this video, we will see the stress strain curve for ductile material. So basically this curve show you how the material will behave at different stages of loading. So we will discuss each and every point onto this curve. So let's start the video. Here we have a mild steel specimen that is acted upon by two equal and opposite tensile load P. Let's say the original length of this specimen was is capital L. So this test is basically performed on universal testing machine that is called as UTM machine. Now here we have a stress strain curve. Stress is plotted on a y axis and strain is plotted on a x axis. So first point onto this curve is called point A which is called as proportional limit. So why it is called as proportional limit? If we see the graph so in region OA it is perfectly straight line means it obey the Hooke's law. What is the Hooke's law that stray within elastic limit stress is directly proportional to strain means the amount by which stress is increasing by same amount strain is also increasing. So that is why point A is called as proportional limit that is the first point on this curve. Then we have second point that is point B elastic limit here you can see the curve is slightly deviating from proportional proportionality so if you see point B and point A they are actually very close to each other so in the region AB this specimen will behave in an elastic manner means that if we remove the load at point B then the material will regain its original shape and size that means it will get back to its original length that was capital L if we remove this both load. So that is why it is called as elastic limit because in this region it will elastically deform. Now next point is the point C that is called as upper yield point. So here you can see in the region BC there is more increase in strain as compared to stress. So in this region material will behave in a plastic manner. Means in this region material is permanently deformed. Means it will not regain its original length that was capital L if we remove the load. So it will not regain its original shape and size. So that is called as C point that is upper yield point. The stress corresponding to this point is called as yield strength SY that is the yield strength the maximum stress before the plastic deformation of material takes place. Now next point on to this curve is the point D that is called as lower yield point. Here we can see there is a drop in stress with increase in a strain. So point D is called as lower yield point and the value is called as lower value of stress. Now next point is the point F that is the ultimate stress. Here we can see there is increase in stress and strain. Both are increasing but they are not proportionally increasing ok so at point E there is a neck formation in this specimen cross-sectional area is going on decreasing ok so the value of a stress at point E is called as ultimate strength that is SUT so ultimate strength is nothing but the maximum stress before formation of neck in a specimen that is called as ultimate strength. Now last point onto this curve is the point F that is the breaking point. So after point E the material will suddenly break down into two pieces and it will form cup and cone like shape. Okay. So the value of stress corresponding to point F is called as breaking strength or breaking 
stress. So this is all about the stress strain curve. Here you can see in the region OA the area in the region OA is called as elastic region while the area in region B to region F this region is called as plastic region. So this is your plastic region on stress strain curve and this is your elastic region on a stress strain curve. So this is all about in this video. Hope you like this video. Thank you for watching.